Welcome back to the second video of the virtual SD branch series. I'm Mitchell and for this video I'll cover the SDN automation part. This part is all powered through a Python script that can create and delete an environment within Aruba Central. If we take a look at the script, um, we will create a virtual environment. Uh, and then the script has two functions, either to create an environment and then uh, the other one to delete it. So taking a look at those specific functions, uh, one ma major function of, uh, of the script is creating the necessary tokens to interact with uh, the central APIs. And then to create various objects such as groups, site locations, but also creating virtual gateway instances and pushing the configurations uh, to them. And then naturally to delete them, certain objects need to be deleted. So that's all uh, also part of uh, this particular script. To start from where we left off with this lab, we have the connectivity in the underlay network within the management network. And now we'll add some additional endpoints to make this particular GNS lab ready to go. And then we'll start off with the automation part. So we'll create a new template for that for the endpoints, which are going to be web clients with uh, Firefox installed in them. It's uh, called WebTerm, which is a Docker image, uh, which basically just uh, next, next finish. And once we drag and drop this particular Docker file um, or Docker template, um, the VM will try to download those particular Docker images. As you can see over here. Uh, apart from that, uh, we're going to create a new Docker image based on a web server, an NGINX one. Uh, so that's already pre-compiled. Uh, we'll create a new template over here. And instead of uh, the existing image, we're going to create a new image. And this is the one that we will be using for that. So it has a test page uh, hosted, uh, which is easy to, uh, to deploy with a static IP addresses. So next, next finish, also drag and drop this device over here and then the, another web terminal template over here. So as we are waiting for the, um, uh, for downloading this particular image, I'm going to configure the, um, the name here and the DHCP settings for these uh, virtual machines. So this will be called Corp. And we can edit the, uh, the edit the network configuration in such a way to just unmark uh, the uh, config configuration settings for the Ethernet port. Do the same for the bring your own device machine. And what we'll then do is uh, place a switch in between which is just a regular ethernet switch over here. Make sure to connect uh, to the server and then connect the ports. For that, we'll be, use, uh, we'll be using port uh, two over here, connected to ethernet zero, ethernet one for the corporate and to the bring your own device. And then we need to do a little configuration on the switch side. So make sure to double click. So right now port eight is selected. Once you double click port zero, for example, you'll see it changing over here. We'll change that to a trunk.1q uh, with a native feeling of one. Click on uh, add over here, and then we'll do the same for Ethan, uh, ethernet one for the switch, double click, make it VLAN 10, which is our corporate VLAN. And then port two will be VLAN 12. Click on add apply and okay. So this is all we need to do over here. Then the web terminal, configure that web server is fine. Then we have the network configuration and then uncomment this. And the address over here, this is the CX underlay sw uh, switch. It will be this particular range that we will be using. So uh, 245.1 will be the default gateway for this machine. And this will be a public DNS server. Right, now with the right fonts. Click on OK. 
and connect this particular machine to port 4 on the CX switches. Right, so now that we have this particular connectivity, it's also time to connect the dots uh, between the CX uh, devices and the virtual gateways. And there is some logic there. Uh, the logic there is that uh, the first or the two interface over here, the first one is the internet line for brand, uh, virtual gateway number one. Uh, this one over here is the MPLS line, and then we have these uh, sets. Number four will be internet for uh, virtual gateway two, and then the five also the MPLS line for virtual gateway two. So I'll connect the dots first for the internet lines. Um, I'll leave the MPLS one over here uh, empty so we can uh, get a better view of the zero touch provisioning happening on this particular device. But I'll be sure to connect already MPLS lines for the, uh, for the other devices there. And then the virtual gateways obviously need to connect within the data center to the CX machine over here, uh, number two, and then two to three, right. Now we are pretty much done with, uh, with the GNS lab. The next step that we'll need to do at some point is upload the user data file, which includes serial number, MAC address, and um, also the, uh, the URL that uh, these particular machines will need to reach out to, to which Aruba central cluster. So the European cluster or the US cluster, for example. Uh, that is all contained within the user data file, and this will need to be uploaded uh, into the CD uh, prior, uh, before installation, really. Okay, so uh, we're done with that. Then it's time to kick off the installation script. And for that, uh, as you can see in the README, we will need to create a new virtual environment over here. We can just head over to the directory over here. And this is the uh, central script. So I'm going to create a new Python uh, environment. call the virtual environment fenf and then install the uh, requirements over here uh, for the packages. Uh, first of all, we need to activate it, by the way, the virtual environment. Uh, we can do it on the Mac with source. As you can see, we're now within the virtual environment and which also changed, for example, if we take a look at where the Python path is, it's over here. It's actually leading to the uh, virtual environment that we'll have. And then we can safely install the packages that I have uh, 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 specified within the requirements file. Now, before we're going to execute this particular script, we need to fill in the configuration file um, that we have over here. So rename to config.cfg. Uh, you can find it over here so to go to central and then config. We need to rename this particular configuration file, which has all the uh, the clusters already over here of Aruba Central. And then you can just uncomment, uh, for example, if you want to uh, head over to the APEC one cluster and deploy your virtual lab over there, make sure to comment this particular settings and then uncomment this one. I'll be using the EU cluster for here. Um, but first, rename this particular configuration. Right, so we have this uh, particular config, uh, change the file name. But as well, we need to fill in at least the customer ID, the username and password for the front end tokens, and then for the back end tokens, an OAuth2 uh, credential need to be created. So, client ID and a client secret. I won't go through the installation of an, um, of an Uber Central account, though I would. Uh, strongly recommend on to create a new account for yourself. And you can do that by heading over to arubanetworks.com, click on Try Central, and then click on Got an Aruba AP Start Your Trial here. From that point on, uh, you can fill in your details, select the server that you'd like to deploy on, uh, make sure to check on network operations, and once you're done with that, we'll take it further from there. So once we're all set, we can log in. Click on Evaluate Now, click on Exit Workflow. 
and head over to the admin page. Over here, we can see the custom ID. So copy that and fill it over in here. From that point on, we can create our OAuth2 client ID and secrets. And this may take up to five seconds or something like that before it's actually created. Over here, client ID, the client secret. And from that point on, fill in your username and password. This particular zero touch provisioning script does not work in conjunction with two factor authentication or client certificate authentication. So uh, I'm sorry, it's just going to be a plain username and password for this uh, virtual lab. So now that I filled in also my username and password, it's time to head over to the network monitoring uh, uh, site over here. Click on overview and we have our Python script ready to go. Click on enter. And we have two functions of the script. That is one to create a virtual gateway or create the virtual environment, as, as I should say, or delete the virtual environment. So it also um, makes a, a clean set mess afterwards. So once we perform the create virtual gateway, the script is going to do uh, a few things there. Uh, one part is the uh, token creation, so we'll make sure that it logs in in the way as you would for the front end. Then it can just uh, do the regular stuff to, for example, create virtual gateways in an unmanaged way. So as you can see, the script is already busy with creating the virtual gateways. Um, and it, it uses some timing there to make sure uh, that the objects are really created um, and, and not seen as redundant clicks uh, as you would click on uh, uh, multiple times for create device identity, for example. What I'll do is I'll let the script finish off and then we'll go over uh, the verbose output uh, of this particular script to see what has happened in the, uh, in the environment. The script has finished running, so let's uh, scroll down um, or up a bit. Uh, right, so we have the token selection over here that uh, also the custom ID that we filled in is selected as well. Um, the tokens are being added into the SQLite database and the virtual gateways are added. So let's take a look at the virtual gateways over here. By now we should see four virtual gateways, which then are uh, listed here as well. The groups are created and then uh, configuration is also added into the group. So if you're interested in the configuration part, that is also added uh, from the script itself. As you can see over here. From that point on, we also have our locations, as you see here. And from that point on, it's basically just a mix and match. So we, it's a dividing uh, between the virtual gateways, two of them will uh, come uh, as a uh, will become a, a VPN concentrator to a, uh, a branch gateway uh, uh, divided over here, as you would see. Uh, from that point on, they are added into the right groups, also the monitoring site and the user data file, which we've discussed uh, earlier on this video, uh, is also downloaded. So this looks to be good and in order. If we take a look at um, the overview of the devices, of the uh, gateways, we should see them here as well. Take a look at the max serial number and, for example, uh, the group and the site. We see that the devices are added uh, to the respective groups and site locations. If I'm going to take uh, the branch gateway number one, so SDB branch one, as an example, uh, click on device, we should see its configuration also being defined already. As you would see here, for example, or the interfaces, it's already defined. In the folder as the output of this particular script at the root, you would see the ISO files, which we will now use for the GNS lab. Right, so here we have the lab again, and I'll just upload all the ISO files onto the uh, virtual machines.
Now that the ISO files are added into the, uh, the virtual gateways, it's time to start them. And click on console, a new VNC screen will pop up. And the booting uh, will start as following. At some point, um, the uh, ISO file will be copied over into uh, the hard disk. And from that point on, it will start the zero touch provisioning process. In the meantime, it might be nice to show what is actually happening with the zero touch provisioning process. And we can do that because it's a virtual lab uh, by clicking onto the link and click on start capture. As you would see right now, the uh, branch gateway is requesting an IP address. It received one. It is reaching out to Aruba Central Services. And from that point on, it will try to sync its clock. So then it can uh, request for a certificate for the communication between uh, the device itself and Aruba Central. It will restart or uh, soft reset some processes. Uh, and from that point on, once it fully um, uh, uh, downloads the uh, configuration from Aruba Central, it will reboot. Um, so I think after about five minutes, uh, you should be able to see the branch gateway popping up uh, within the Aruba Central overview over here for devices. So in the meantime, I'll also uh, enable uh, the virtual gateways over here. And let's see how they will look like uh, once they're all done and configured. From this point on, it seems that all devices have been uh, or are online. As you can see over here, uh, the name that was been put of, or that has been pushed to the configuration uh, to the script is also been applied onto the device. Uh, the same as you would see within the um, monitoring side of the gateways here as well. Branch gate two is still uh, rebooting. So taking a look at the branch gateway itself. Uh, at some point we would have the WAN side here. Uh, also tunnels being created uh, for the VPNCs between them. So stuff is still in progress in terms of the configuration being deployed. Uh, that being said, uh, we should already be able to uh, interact with the lab. Uh, so let's start uh, with bringing on the web clients by starting them. And open up a console session over here, like so. And it seems that they already have internet connectivity. We could also open up a terminal application to see what IP address it has. Right, so 2.2, .2, uh, that's the VLAN of this particular if we take a look at the LAN interfaces, it's VLAN 10, so that will be the corporate uh, user. And we could also turn on the web server as well. So I'm just going to do a, a quick check here to see if there is some uh, connectivity between the labs. So if we would like to ping the data center side, the uh, 2055 so pinging the core router, its interface, and we, sh we are also able to ping the web server from the corporate client through the SDN overlay. So this looks to be all good in order. And that's a wrap. This was the second video out of the three where we completed the GNS lab installation as well as saw the installation script do all the work for us in terms of interacting with Aruba Central and creating all the objects. In the next video, we'll walk through the aspects of the lab and do some additional testing and showcasing as well. Per the usual, I hope you found this video informative. If you want to receive updates and would like to see more of these videos, like and subscribe and feel free to leave any questions or comments below this video.